So here's another kind of practical example for this uh, satellite that orbits. So we have the Hubble Space Telescope. So it or, uh, orbits the Earth approximately 596 kilometers above the surface. So just remember that uh, we're going to take that number and add it to the radius of the Earth so that the total distance. So we're going to ask um, how fast does it go to maintain the orbit and then determine the orbital period. So if you remember from the previous uh, example, which you can take a look at, um, the velocity or the speed that it has to uh, travel at is simply a function of our constant, g, the mass of the Earth, which is known, and then whatever the radius or the distance is that we're dealing with here. So in this case, uh, we know the mass of the Earth. It's about 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And then we know the radius of the Earth, 3.38 times 10 to the 6 meters, and then we know um, the distance from the surface of the Earth to the satellite, 596 kilometers. So the total radius that we're dealing with here is going to be on the order of, let me get that a little bit. So the total radius we're dealing with here is going to be 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters plus 5.98 times 10 to the 5 meters, so that gives us a total R value of 6.978 times 10 to the 6 meters. So that's what we're going to use in our equation here. So to solve for uh, the velocity, we have our square root, R value for G, 667 times 10 to the negative 11. We have the mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24. And then we have our distance from the center of the Earth to where the satellite actually orbits, 6.978 times 10 to the 6, and that's in meters. When we solve for that, we're left with 7,560 meters per second. So that's the speed at which the, um, the Hubble telescope must maintain to maintain that orbit. Next up is to solve for the orbital period. Well, the orbital period, in this case, we're dealing with um, it traveling in a circle. So we need to recall that the diameter of a circle is just 2 pi times r. So we know all these values. Um, we can solve for d which is going to give us 2 times pi times what we uh, solved for previously, 6.978 times 10 to the 6. So that'll be in, in meters. You could convert that to um, kilometers, so that's a more friendly unit. Solving for this gives us 4.38 times 10 to the 7. So that's meters. So that's the total distance that the satellite has to travel. If we know distance and we know speed, we can find the time, which is going to be the period. So now we're left with t is equal to d over v. That's 4.38 times 10 to the 7 meters divided by 7,560 meters per second, which leaves us with 5,700 in 99 seconds. And of course, you could convert this um, into minutes or hours. So that would be about 97 minutes or 1.6 hours.